Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is January the 20th, 2018. Don't forget to subscribe and also ring that bell for our future updates. And I'm going to hand this right over to Vegas and she's going to give you the watch list for today. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, Sunday. And yes, we know tomorrow's Martin Luther King Day market closed. But that's fine because we're going to take advantage of giving you some tickers to keep an eye on for Tuesday. So you know what? You should actually take advantage of the fact that tomorrow the markets are closed and you can check these out a little more to do your own due diligence. Uh, so this is quite interesting. You know, Jim's actually done a beautiful job of putting together a 20-day running 20-day watch list. And... Um, you know, there's just so many great tickers. I was like, Jim, how'd you do this? And he's like, you know what? I have a scan for it. I says, oh my gosh, that's awesome. So I saw this list. He's going to share it. Uh, but I we're only able to pick a handful because, you know, we'd be on here for hours. So uh, the stocks we're going to talk about today, CHK, Cron, CX, CZR, or CZR, uh, AVP, EGY, and guess what? I have a bonus, and I think even Jim has a bonus today. So why don't we start off with CHK. Now, Chesapeake Energy. Well, a couple things I do want to mention with the stock. So, you know, Chesapeake Energy is very involved in the oil and drilling. Um, I think, you know, in my opinion, and uh, even from articles I've been reading, out there even articles on seeking alpha uh, from other analysts out there that are involved in the um, oil and energy stocks i do have to say i like it because uh it's a great energy company i think they're looking to acquire future assets in 2019 definitely um looks like undervalued and really because you know they had lower earning expectations and really also because of the slumping crude oil prices, which was mentioned in a Seeking Alpha article. Uh, so it looks like the company with uh, future acquisitions that they might consider uh, would definitely create some influx in their cash flow. But I gotta tell you, I really like in this chart, I'm gonna turn it over to Jim in just one second, but I have to say that back in December 28, just before New Year's, um, I did share, if you are in our chat there, um, I did mention the uh, Chesapeake Energy Option Call. And I had forecasted that, you know what, probably by February um, 1st, we should see $2.50 or more. And uh, the option calls were dirt cheap. I mean, they were $0.19. Cents. Some people picked them up for less. Um, Jim can show you there. I did share the alert with the room. Um, and now those option calls are going for, you know, over 45 cents plus. Like people have already cashed out when they made double the money. But I mean, the ones that are holding on are banking. And uh, this is why I really love newbies to really try to try to make money with options on small um, entries like this. You can really grow that account. So, Jim, over to you to talk about that CHK chart, please. That was very nice. I mean, you called that February the 1st, to uh, expire February the 1st, so beautiful call. I also wanted to mention the IV operations here in Louisiana, Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Wyoming. So that was kind of interesting. And there's the map of it, just kind of show you where their operations are. And I'm going to go ahead and bring you right to the chart. This is a one-year chart, CHK. We've This is on that scan that I created, and I think we got more to go on this stock for sure. You can see the bottom back when I called out my crystal ball. It was down here to $1.71, and that was on 12.20, 12.24, actually. It hit a bottom there. And ever since then, I said, get into stocks that you used to really like because that that December sell-off was just overdid. And a lot of the stocks that we watched, and I've projected my crystal ball that 2019 was going to be a good year. Well, ever since that call, we've had almost a green day ever since. And this is was on that scan that I produced. And that scan I created is a 20-day period of high lows. So it, it uh, I just 
created it this weekend. I'm going to be, it's going to be my case study in the chat room. And if anybody wants to follow me in the chat room for two week free trial, they can go ahead and I'll let them have this scan that I got on toss think or swim. So anybody that enters that, ask me, private message me, washboard Jim, and I'll bring you right to that. And I'll, and I'll turn you on to that scan. But it, it's a real nice scan. It's going to give you 20-day highs, and you can adjust it any way you like. That's what I like about it. So we, I, we had this little channel, and I had a resistance at 296. So I'm going to draw what I think is going to be the next resistance to go to, and it's going to be right around 310. 310, and then I'm seeing another one right here right around 323, and that lines up pretty well. You see it lines up right here. It lines up right in here. It also lines up right in here. So I'm going to take it to that 223 area. And I'm going to put them two blue trend lines in. So I'm going to run this up to 223. One thing I notice about this stock, it has the same high volume every day. So it can be a little fluctual. It can be a little volatil volatility there. And when I say that, that means it's a great pullback play stock for small pullbacks. And I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart here just to show you what I'm what I'm talking about. But this has been a wonderful run from 171 in 20 days, and that's what this scan is going to give you. It's going to give you 20-day highs, and you can adjust it to 10, to 5, however you want to do that. And that's 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 going to be a, a very big advantage. So I'm going to bring this up to the one day, one minute, and see what I'm talking about when I say volatility. It just drop maybe oh 10 cents here and bounce right back up so there's a 10 cent bounce and i'm just going to keep a good i've been watching this for a long time it's an easy play just get in on the pullbacks find support and there you are and i'm going to pull up the 20 day one more time or at least the three month if i can find there it is and i'm going to magnify this a little bit and this here is going to give you where i think the resistances are and the supports and I'm going to draw one more little support right in here just in case we get a pullback. And that's going to be right around 269 to maybe 278. No lower than that. So if it pulls back any, look for it to pull back to this 200 SMA. And I'm going to pull up the year's chart one more time just to see where the SMAs are. We just broke past the 50. So we could run this up to 354 if you wanted to go long with it. And also check out your options on this thing. This could be another option play. All these all these next five tickers that I'm going to show you, next six, could be in your options category if you want to look at options. So that's another idea. And the next one we're going to talk about is one of my favorites, and that's going to be Cron. So I've yeah. been, you, can pause, you can pause this uh, video and see where my resistances are on these charts and write them down. So Cron's going to be the next one. Vegas, what do you think about uh, yeah. that? What do you think so about you know it? what? I got to say, I love prawn and I know there was some, you know, negative news about marijuana stocks. Uh, and, you know, Jim and I were like, just ignore the news. I mean, you can't listen to all those crazy things. Um, but I do want to mention something for Cron. So they did make an announcement on uh, Friday um, that they are going to have a special meeting for the shareholders um, to be held on February 21st. And this meeting is in connection with the proposed $2.4 billion Canadian dollars uh, equity investment by Altria Group in the Kronos Investment, which was, by the way, a PR was released on that back on December 7th. And it's basically, you know, it was announced back then. And uh, obviously the board wants to just have, um, you know, they want to uh, discuss it and determine that the transaction is in the best interest of the Chorus Group. And they're unanimously recommending that the shareholders vote in favor of the transaction. So this meeting will be held, as I mentioned, uh, actually in Toronto on February 21st. Uh, in downtown Toronto at the office at 199 Bay Street. So if you're interested in going and you're a shareholder in Toronto, uh, that's where you need to be. Or you can also listen to the webcast. As a matter of fact, maybe I should go there and I can talk to some of those executives at the meeting and maybe um, maybe uh, have them uh, come and talk on our show, Jim, Yep. Uh, since they're so close to me. Uh, so you know what? Jim's been talking about Con for a while. 
And I've also been talking about it from an options perspective because you have to remember, I talk about this a lot in the videos. I really am, and so is Jim. We really want to help people with smaller accounts. And uh, one of the things I look for when we look when we have stocks that are expensive, and you know, for me, like a ten dollar stock plus is expensive. If you have a small account, how many shares can you really buy? Not saying you can't buy stocks. Of course you can, but uh, you know, maybe there's a way for you to make money uh, where your the money you're investing is not as much. So on Cron. I'll let Jim talk about the chart, but from the options side, uh, because of Jim's charting skills, okay, and I've taken advantage of the way he charts, you know, he's a really great chartist, as you guys know, um, with his custom lines that he puts in there. Um, I've been able to look at option calls and uh, have actually bought options with the group. Uh, we had options for the $14 calls and we had options also for $15 calls and people are just banking. I mean, we have ones that expire this week. These were $14 calls. We shared that idea on Monday and um, those ones were 87 cents. And what is the stock at right now, Jim? It closed at fourteen ninety. Yes. And, so people uh, are in the money on the option calls. I'm gonna let Jim talk about that chart because you know people are just making money on the options land. You know, eighty seven dollars investment is paying for people. So good job. So yeah. Jim, over to you with that chart. You mentioned one and other thing. You. you mentioned one other thing to me about Cron, right? About yes, the, the guy that the rich guy that has all the money. Oh, that's the Tillery guy, Tillery. Well, that was Tillery, okay. Yeah, that's okay. okay, but you know what? They're all friends. Yep. <laughs> so, Cron, I just now realized, you know, I'm sitting here, and I called this out at 10 bucks. I said it was a strong buy at $10 right here at ten fifteen, and that was about three weeks ago, two and a half, three trading weeks ago, and ever since then, it's rose up five bucks. Well, I just now noticed on a year's chart that we have a resistance here at 1530 when they got that big news with uh, that cigarette company that they're going to start maybe rolling blunts, who knows. But we did hit that top, Vegas, at 1530. I wanted to bring that to your attention. And that's going to be a double top on Cron. Now, this stock, uh, if you're not in the trade, wait for a small pullback on it because it does it every time. And you'll get, if you can find support, That'll be your time to get in it if you're not in the trade right yet. Don't just go jumping in on double top. Wait for a little bitty pullback, and then we'll see if we can break that double top. I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart, but that was a one-year. And I'm going to pull that one-year one more time just to look at the moving averages. We have a golden cross created right here, and that was about four days ago. We started the golden cross. That means the 50 run up over this 100 SMA, and it never did go down below the 200. See, we had a little tight squeeze right here back in uh, on the on the eighth month of, of the first, and it had a real nice bounce and pulled back. So you can see the pullbacks. So a healthy pullback for this stock right now would be right around the 1380 area, maybe a buck for not much lower than that. And I'm going to open up to the 20-day chart. You can see that I, where I called it out here at the 1015 level, less than 20 days ago in about a three week period, maybe, you know, four uh, trading day period for about a month ago. And it's just ran strong ever since. A little pullback to the 100 here on that news that the new attorney general is gonna try to not to make it federal, but keep it in the states, let the states write their own laws for it. Now I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Maybe, you know, it'd be kind of like the health insurance where they won't cross state lines, but who knows? We'll see what happens. But we did pull back to 1477. I had a 1478 support on this stock, and I think that's where it pulled back Friday for a little bit below that to right around 1465. So I'm going to put another trend line right there just in case. Low support right around 1442. Let's see if we can get back to this double top area of 1519 and break that this coming week if not it might just pull back a little bit and then i'll jump back in it so that's cron i've been bullish on this for over a half a year and the next one we're going to speak about is going to be cx and that's also on yes. the uh 20 period scan that i have sure is so cx you know this is a company called cmax and you know this company 
you know, uh, just a quick history. Like it was started in 1906 and then they became, um, you know, they're out in Mexico. And, uh, you know, this company, they're very involved in the, you know, uh, concrete, pre-mixed concrete. And they're the second largest building uh, after so, You're cutting out there. Joke company. Pardon? You're cutting out there. We can barely hear you. Oh, I couldn't. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So I said this is the second largest uh, building materials company next to Lafarge. So this is not a joke of a company. Um, so this stock appeals to me because I really like the channel that it's in. And um, I don't have a position in the stock at all. But uh, certainly really do like the direction of where this is going. And I'll just turn it over to Jim to talk about that beautiful setup on a chart. And if you guys like swing trades, I mean, this is one that you should seriously consider uh, because of the channel that it's in. And it looks like it wants to have a continuation. Yeah. This so, Jim, is, over to you. They have a real nice website, too. I mean, it's very educational. So if you get a chance, look up their website. You can study, do more homework on this stock right here. But I really like this website. So I'm going to pull up a year's chart on the stock, CX, and I'm going to show you what this scan's proven to me. And I'm going to probably adjust it. This is going to be my case study for this coming week. I'm going to put it in different time frames. So I'm looking at the year's chart. We kind of hit a bottom there at 447. It bounced up, hit a resistance right around 529, pulled back to support again right at 461. And ever since that 20 days, we've had a pretty good upward. We broke past the 50 SMA. We're running into the 100 here at 573, and I've got a 16, I got a 615 here, 200 SMA, and these 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 moving channels, uh, moving averages move a little bit, so I'm going to draw me a, a solid support right here around 580. You see where I'm getting that at from right over here, and then I'm going to go right above it a little bit. I'm going to take it to what I think is going to be the next support, next resistance. And that's going to be right around 602. So let's keep a good watch, 607. And that runs almost right into that 200 SMA. And then maybe for a pullback, I mean, we're sitting right now here at 558. Five, and I see a support level here at 554. And then I see another one right down here. Oh, this is a beautiful one right here at 531. So if it pulls back to this 531, or maybe a 517, it's going to be a strong buy for this stock right here, CX. But we're in a bullish pattern. I want to see if it wants to keep on running up. We're in the 20-day right now. Maybe we can run it up to the 60-day, and that might bring you up there to about 6 bucks. And that's a solid going to be a solid resistance if it hits that 200 SMA. I'm going to pull it to the 20-day real fast, and I'm going to draw one more little support level right here at 542. We could get a pullback to 542 also. If you need to pause this tape and look at the chart, go ahead and write these numbers down and then get back with me. You can make comments below the video and we'll see where we go with this. I like to keep this interactive with the, with our followers. And the next one we're going to talk about, in fact, I'm going to pull this up just for the day, one minute, and take a look at it and draw another little resistance level here at 560. So I'm saying we need to break... If we want to break this channel, we need to break past 562. Not the 563. I go with the base of the candle. So that's CX. And the next one we're going to talk about, if you like to gamble, Vegas, CZR. One of, <laughs> Vegas, you well, get it? Let me get, let me, because that's why I love Vegas. Because yep. I love, you know, but people think trading is gambling, but it's actually not. So that's why I love that name. It's an art. <clears throat> it's an art. And you have to study. Um, so I just want to talk about Caesars, the stock. I mean, the stock, you know, I got to tell you, this was a bargain, okay, a couple weeks back. I mean, back just after maybe just before Christmas. I mean, this stock was as cheap as $6.13 back on Christmas Eve. I mean, look where it is. Oh, like it's almost $3 a share. Uh, but the reason this stock, I want to bring it to your attention is that, you know, you guys know Carl Icahn. For those of you that don't know, uh, he's obviously a billionaire and he's got his own hedge fund and he is building a stake in the casino operator. And that's what he um, sources were telling CNBC News. And um, 
there was talk a while back last year that, um, you know, the owner of the Houston Rockets, Tillman Fertitta, was looking to, uh, you know, offer Caesars $13 cash for stock. And uh, the deal just never went through. And the, the stock did have a little bit of a run at the time when it was a rumor. But uh, unfortunately, that deal never happened. Now that Carl Icahn is building a little stake here, uh, it is interesting. I will actually put the link in our video today only because there's an actual video that you can watch um, that explains uh, the news a little more. Uh, but we don't know the size of the stake he's taken. All we know is that uh, he is definitely involved. Uh, but we don't know how many shares he's buying or anything like that. So as you can see, the stock did have um, obviously a little boost there. And uh, we'll have to see what happens uh, with the stock. But I will say I will be looking at options on this on Tuesday. Um, should have actually looked at that already on Friday. But uh, there's a lot going on. So uh, definitely, you know what? Check it out Monday. But Jim, what do you think about that beautiful chart? Yeah, I wish you had looked at this chart Friday after hours. Yeah. Friday after hours, it it jumped from nine bucks to nine twenty four cents, and I think it's pulled back down about midway to about nine ten, but it closed at eight ninety five. So this stock's very bullish, very bullish. And if you're a scalper, you could probably be scalping this thing come Tuesday. But I've just now noticed after hours it jumped up to 924. And I noticed this ain't no small operation. No. There, there, I mean, it's got 40 plus hotels and casinos. Oh, yeah. So the, and, They're involved into everything. And know? I played my first game at uh, craps at this at this hotel here down in Vegas when I was learned how to play craps. And that was back in... <laughs> Oh, it had to have been back in 2000 and, uh, 1989, if I remember right. Somewhere back then. And I've, I've only been to Vegas one time, so I de definitely want to take me a three-day trip there this year. So let's look at the chart. I'm going to pull up the year's chart, and I like the fact that Carl Icahn's involved in this because he's probably one of my favorite activists. When it comes to dealing with companies, when they don't pull up to par, he has a you know has a pretty big say about it. And again, my crystal ball was right. It was down here at 584, and I was telling the room, man, get your favorite stock list out and start buying these stocks. And this was before everybody else was talking about it. They were still saying we're going to have a bearish year this year, and I'm saying no way, not after the month we had in December, because that's the first time we've ever had a, a month like that ever. In history where it was just run on algorithms and idiots bringing the stock market down so I was ready this thing's bounced up to 895 so we got a little more resistance right here at 920 and I think we hit that 924 after hours I didn't have this charted up right there so we could bring this up I'm telling you the stock is going to run up to around that 924 area 927 and pause a little bit and pull back so you still have a chance to get in the stock, and it's going to run up probably to about ten bucks, and if it can, we'll exceed past to that ten fifty area, and it had a year high of fourteen fifty, with Car Carl Icon involved in it. I see this stock going definitely back to ten seventy five, to that pivot point, which is right in here, right around above ten forty three, ten fifty to ten seventy five. That's a pivot point, which used to be an old uh, support level. And that's how I d determine on a year's chart if this is a good stock I want to play. So remember this scan, if you come join the room for two-week free trial, you'll be able to get this scan for free. And that's just for TOS users though, right? Think yeah, or just swim for TOS users. Think or swim. And mm -hmm. I'm not, in, no affiliate of TOS or affiliate. I'm just, you know, I just like using their platform for charting. So I'm going to pull up the, uh, I'm not getting a dime out of it is what I'm saying. <laughs> we've had the 20-day run here from 584 that i called the bottom at last year and we've run all the way to 924 that's a look at that that's a four dollar and uh 60 cent bounce in a matter of 20 days you could have really banked on this stock and if you knew me i had my crystal ball out and i was saying look 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 it's time for bargains 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to I have this charted up about to where I want it. I'm going to pull it up to the five day. Just look at the five day real fast. I think support level is going to be right around here around 886. 886 to maybe this moving average of 883. And we can see if that support holds. If not, it'll go ahead and break on up. But be sure to watch the volume. And this is a momentum play. And I want to try to get in on the pullback. First support's going to be right around nine bucks, nine dollars. We're at nine twenty-four after hours, and we're to think we settled here. Well, we might have pulled back right about to that eight ninety-five again. So don't be afraid. This sucker's going to run up a little bit more, and that is C Z R. And you know what? The ladies and the gentlemen are going to love this next one. It makes you smell okay. all pretty and. Makes I don't look, know about that, makes but you, I have never bought any of their fragrances. You haven't? Uh, no, because, uh, you know, so I want to talk about Avon. So Avon's back on the list here, as you guys know, female CEO running the show. I got to tell you, a little disappointed in Avon, not about the chart, but I'm reading some news. Jim can show you guys the news. So, you know, they had a recent commercial and they, you know, trying to promote this new skin product, oh. which, you know, reduces cellulite, firms your skin. And they put a commercial of a girl wearing some shorts and they said, you know, dimples are cute on your face, not on your thighs. Well, let me just tell you, the women out there are fuming about this, shaming women, people, thousands of people called out Avon. Uh, celebrities are on this, Jamila Jamil on social media uh, basically said that she's got dimples on her thighs. And uh, she says, you know, how can you guys say this? Stop shaming women of any age. Any, gravity, any kind of gravity and cellulite. Um, these are normal things that happen. And, uh, you know, making us fear to try and fix them is uh, setting people up for failure. So anyhow, um, they, uh, you know, uh, the, the company has apologized for this campaign. But I have to say, I don't blame them. And the response from Avon was this. Uh, hi, Jamila. We understand where you're coming from. We realize that we missed the mark with the messaging. We have removed this messaging from all the future marketing materials. We fully support our community and loving their bodies and feel confident in their own skin. Now, I got to tell you, she's a woman CEO running the show here. Like, why didn't she uh, say that that would probably offend women? Because, I mean, I'm not even running the Avon company, but if someone showed that ad and said, I kind of say, well, you know, you might offend like people that have like, you know, marks on their thighs. I mean, I have some marks, I mean, everyone does. So I don't understand how they can put that out there. But anyways, uh, damage is done. So regardless, I don't know how the stock's gonna behave tomorrow. I don't, we'll see, but the chart is looking bullish again. Uh, so Jim, what do you think of the Avon chart? It kind of reminds me of what Gillette did here just a couple weeks ago, bashing men. Yeah. And what did they say about the men and Gillette? They said men need to be more feminine and, and more gentle, gentler to women. And, and they're kind of putting all men in a category. And when it comes to women, I'm probably one of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet when it comes oh. to interrelationships. And I was kind of offended with that, too. The politically correctness has kind of never been my style of life. So, you know, I'll tell you that right now. I, I, I make fun of people that try to be politically correct with me. And I remember, well, I don't want to get into this, but I remember back in 1978. And I was uh, wiping off a table one day and I said, I asked the uh, manager if he had any more rags. And he told me, he says, Jim, we can't talk like that anymore in the restaurant because that's offensive to women. And I said, a rag is a rag, you know. But they were trying to correlate them to, and that was back in 1978. Then I realized that this country was going down the wrong direction. So, this is AVP. We're going to look at the year's chart. And we hit a bottom. We hit a double bottom, actually, which would have been real strong support. And we shouted this out in the room. Vegas has I been on this stock when it was up here around 2 bucks, And we flipped it from here around $2 up to two twenty. And then there come December. Everything sold off in December, and it dropped on down here to about 143 and bounced up to about 201. Here after hours, we hit a 201 closing. So if it pulls back any 
Let's see if we can get in it right around $1.87. I think that's where solid support is. If not, we can go just a little bit lower to $1.78. But I, you know, I like this company just because, you know, they made fun of whatever cellular light or whatever you want to call that stuff. I'm not offended by it because I'm not, I don't have the perfect body either. But uh, let's just see how it goes. Let's see if we can play in this little channel and see if it breaks out of this channel. Then we got some new resistances here, and that will, and that might take you back up here to that one resistance that I was talking about earlier, right around 220. But I think this is going to be a little good pullback play to the 177 area, and we'll watch it from there. And this is also on my 20-day scan, which I'm going to adjust it here to 10 days, and I'm just going to kind of play with it the scan here next week that's going to be my case study the next one we're going to talk about is called EGY okay so EGY you know I or another energy stock you know yep. this is definitely overbought um the stochastics will have some strength here the Bollinger Bands are wide um definitely I am liking EGY now this like i said energy stock and i like i said energy is going to be a theme okay for the year so for those of you that like energy stocks um or looking at themes for 2019 energy is definitely going to be one of them um so definitely keep energy stocks or even have a watch list just comprised of energy stocks some people don't like to have watch list with a whole bunch of stuff on it so maybe have a watch list specifically for oil and energy. Uh, we know that uh, they're in Houston, Texas, and, um, you know, they, uh, you know, it's where they operate from. So uh, there's no really no news to really report on AGY, except that the stock's on a bullish channel. So over to you, Jim, on what to watch for this, because this would be a, a probably a decent swing trade as well. Yeah, they had earnings out on the 7th. They had an earnings release, so... That's something you might want to look up and check it out. They announced 10-year extension on inclusive exploration areas uh, through 2028. And that was out on September the 25th. So I always like to look at the past news as much as the forecast and earnings when I'm getting into a stock. News is very important on any trade. So let's pull up the year's chart. Oh, there's one other thing. This is an oil play, yes. So we're going to pull up the year's chart on it. This another 20 day breakout that I've noticed. We had a low last year. Oh man, this thing was down at 72 cents and it ran all the way up to 338 in about our five or six months and it's pulled back and now it's starting to rebound here to the second to the third support level that I had on this yearly chart. And we bounced past the 50 SMA, which is starting to curl up, which is giving me a positive little picture up to the what, the uh, 200 days crossed over the 100, which is a good, maybe a, probably a, oh, a little bitty bearish sign. But we broke past this resistance level, which would be a real solid resistance here at 185. Then we've got a pivot point on this stock between the 184 and the 215. I know that's kind of a big spread, but if we can get up to this 28, 216 area, that's going to be a resistance. It's going to chug a lug, chug a lug right around that 220 area. And if we can get bust past that 220, we're up to the races and we can go a little higher. You can see I have this already charted up because it's on my watch list. And I've had this on the watch list for, I think, for about a week or so. I caught it down here when it was right down 164. That's where I started charting this thing up. And right there, we're up 30 cents on it in a matter of two weeks. It might be a slow little mover. But I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart. Little by little, sometimes those are the best ones to find. And I'm going to draw what I think is going to be a pullback support on this thing to one, uh, 175. I hate to see it go below 175, maybe 169, somewhere where these blue lines are. Anything below 164, I'm going to sweat because I don't think it can get go on down below that. Next resistance is going to be right around here at 202. So that's what we need to break. I'm just going to take us, and we were in a little channel here, rectangle channel here, for about a week, about six days. And then we busted past that in the past three. So she's definitely very bullish. 
I got this off that 20 period scan that I got for new highs and I'm gonna keep this one on watch and I'm gonna pull it just just pull it up to the daily we went from 189 up to 195 it's only about a six cents bounce but it's gradual and it's something that you might want to look into your options and check it out and the next one are going to be our bonus picks you there miss vegas she might not be there so let's... oh i'm here sorry okay <laughs> uh, sorry about that um no i'm here so i really like this one the bonus pick oh, we're working on now bonus pick is called the ticker is called e n i c it stands for anel chile and i want to just say that uh this company is uh recently gave out a and this is very interesting okay uh they gave out a woman's energy award and i thought what is all that about and uh on january 8 the jury of the energy women's award they deliberated for two hours to uh, choose 12 winners that will be announced on March the 8th at an award ceremony. And uh, what it does, this award, is to highlight women who have achieved achievements in areas relevant to the Chilean society and that can inspire other Chileans to excel in different areas of action. And, uh, you know, looking for people to recognize um, the diversity of areas where women have achieved exceptional achievements. And the different categories that they do award on an annual basis are the arts category, public service, uh, contribution to education, innovation and entrepreneurship, working in the community, journalism, entertainment, sports, uh, women's energy award to the trajectory and the um, internal award for the woman group NL. So they did make the announcement i'll just sell, show this to jim if he could show this to you guys because i just was locating this article and i thought this is so cool so um anyhow they're going to announce the winner march the 8th so this is great that a company like this does that and i love stuff like this so uh ladies that's phenomenal um aside from that i do really like this chart i mean this has just been super bullish and uh i like this even for a stress-free uh swing trade because of the way that it's set up and uh for those of you that don't can't day trade or you can't sit at your desk all day you don't have to i mean a chart like this you'd want to trade i mean i really like the fact that it is overbought it had a pivot pocket uh, which is when the volume for the day is higher than a volume on a down day in the last 10 days. And I like pocket pivot setups. So I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart uh, because for those of you that like swings, this is a goodie. This is a one year's chart. We have a golden cross active on it right now where it crosses above the 200. We got to reach up, I mean, to the 100, which is the red line. Then we got to reach up to this 200 red line. It's had a very nice little run here, all the way from the low support. And for anybody that is wanting to learn how I chart things up, I'm going to have a little demonstration right here. So I'm going to look for a low support, which was the previous low before the bounce, where it consolidated at here at 471. And then you see a little resistance here that had to break out. And I'm looking over here, and I'm just trying to draw this all the way across. And I think at 284, it's a pretty good little spot, and that's where that 50 SMA is touching right now another positive move so I'm going to move on up to a little bit here where I see this this where we tried to have a previous high we did have a pullback right there so I'm going to put that pullback on here for a low low support at 459 yeah I don't think it's going to get there unless it gets some real bad news which I don't think it's going to and I'm going to try to find another resistance on it which is we're going to be right here a little under five bucks so we need to take this 50 SMA up to the five bucks, which 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 we broke past that. Got another little resistance right here around 501, which is going to create a support if it decides to pull back. If it decides to pull back, I'm only looking at a 512 right now. You see how that lines up right here where the gap is and that doji. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up to about a 511. And then I'm going to raise it on up 
we're going to find another resistance. There's a couple of little spots I'm liking, but I'm going to draw it. Well, let me look. This is, this is an art as much as it is as a science. Once you're able to understand how charts are and how they tell a story, you'll be able to map, map out how you want to take a trade. The next resistance is going to be right around 530. Then I'm going to bring it up here to another one, which is going to be right around 544. You see where that candle touched down to that line right there? And I'm going to go ahead and just another resistance will be right in here. So I'm, I, I, if I had more time, I'd draw me a little blue line in there. And that's say I want to take this stock to. And then we got a gap, the big long candle here where we had that sell off, which is going to be your final resistance here at 565. And then it can go on up if it's in a run and it starts to really get excited, 579. So there we are. I'm trying to figure out where the pivot point on this stock would be. If I was to maybe imagine where it would be, I would say it would probably be right around this five buck area between this five dollars and maybe this resistance level right here, which is at 533. So we're, we're moving into the pivot point on this yearly chart right now at 533. And that's what we got to break. And if anybody doesn't know what a pivot point is, it's the determination if a stock wants to go up or if it wants to pull back. And usually when it breaks the resistance, breaks a pivot point from support, which was a resistance, and it moves up to resistance, which would be these other blue lines up here, that pivot point would become a support. And that's how you work it. Same as if you were at the pivot point right now and it didn't want to break, you'd be pulling back to support. Then you'd have to break that resistance, which would be the pivot point. I hope I made myself clear on that. And we're going to pull up the 20 day chart. The, what, the support is your support, your pivot points where it decides where it wants to go, and your resistance is where, it want, where you want to try to sell, where you want to try to take profit. And if you're up on any stock, always put that in your mind. Be in the now, know what's going on. And if you get get that feeling go ahead and take profit because they can pull back and you can get right back in it if it doesn't break out so we're going to on this 20-day channel your support level is going to be right around 501 so i'm going to put that in a red line i want to make that 501 my low support if i i'm going to set an alert on it just like this it don't take a second create a, this i use toss think or swim platform I'm going to put it at the ask a little bit below, right around 502, and I'm going to create a support. So if that thing pulls back, I'll be ready to jump in it. That'll be my low support. This is ENIC. I'm going to pull up the daily just to see if I can draw another trend line in here. I see one right here, right off the bat at 529. And then you see my 502 right down here. That'll be my low support, 502. A N I C and the next one it's the time it's the season the holidays <laughs> are over and you're ready for it and Jim's has a yeah you have a little to talk about here yes I have Weight Watchers W T W okay. and and I try to keep a pretty good diet going on but every year everybody makes the same resolution I'm going to lose a few more pounds, get them holiday pounds off me, and get ready for bikini season. And I like the sun. So uh, I called this stock back in November. I told everybody to start being alerted, start watching it, get ready for after the new year, get ready to, to maybe start bouncing on this. So I feel like we've hit a bald bottom. Vegas, would you like to talk anything about this stock before I go on? Well, you know what? I just want to mention that, like, you know, a stock. I mean, it, you know, this still has Oprah, the Oprah effect still in here. Uh, she's still uh, on the board. She's still a shareholder. And, you know, back a year ago, I mean, this stock was in the 60 zones, like, you know, 60 plus. And, I mean, look at the price of the stock now. I mean, it's gone down half. So uh, definitely, I think Jim's on to something here with the direction of where the stock's going to go. Um, so definitely talk about this, Jim, because I'm going to definitely add this to my options yes. uh, list for Tuesday. And those of you that like options or new, um, you know, you can just get one contract depending on the price. Because if the contract's really expensive, like to me, what's expensive, I guess anything over 
um, you know, maybe a dollar fifty a contract is expensive, especially with a smaller account. So I don't know what's out there, but I'll definitely check it out. But Jim, you could talk about this too from a long perspective or someone wants to swing trade this. Uh, like what does Weight Watchers look like to you? Well, there's a lot of good things about this. First thing is it, it didn't bounce when I pulled out my crystal ball. What it done is it went up a little bit and that was back on the 21st of December the, into the last week of the year and it didn't bounce. It just went ahead and pulled back and consolidated. So this one's really got my eye right now because I'm calling it out for, for it's a seasonal trade. And the thing, and this, this got me, this thing had a yearly high of $105.73. And it had a double top here and, and it failed the double top at 103.28. And we've had a pullback ever since. And this pullback's been what, one, two, three, four, five, six months long six and a half months long and then we've consolidated here at the bottom at 31 31.58 a whole week and then we had the breakout last friday it's caught a lot of uh, attention in the room i kind of kept I, I mentioned it a couple times a week ago and i just kind of kept quiet about it and then now the room start to catch into it catch on to it and they're, they're the other people in here are starting to be vocal about it and I do see the consolidated period, which I always like to look for when I'm at a bottom. I always look for that at a bottom. I don't just go on one day, I'll give it, I need a confirmation. The confirmation came out Friday that it ran up from a low, and let me pull up the day's chart, get a real good look at this. I had a low of 32.85 and ran up all the way to 34.42. So that's a good $1.40 bounce. Actually, it's yeah, dollar thirty-eight. It bounced up, so I was just two cents off on that. I'm a mathematical genius. So this thing could pull back to around thirty-four, maybe to a low support or right around thirty-three eighty-two. And I'm going to draw that little trend line in here, so I can be ready for the pullback. It consolidated for the uh, a third, of, not a, less than a third of the day, right in here at this level, and it's just kind of kind of held there but i think this stock's going to start running back up it's a beautiful chart for if you want to go long in an option and not be stress-free about it very stress-free trade very stress-free what i'm saying that is because we hit this bottom and we've consolidated for five to six days you see where it's tied of the street i'm on i'm on the wall street side <laughs> so i want this thing to break past 35 and move on up i mean you you got to look at 44 in 20 days it was at 44.59 this thing's way oversold it's time mm -hmm. to really get serious about this trade and that's weight watchers and that's probably more optimistic on this one than i am on the whole list we gave today for a bottom play perfect bottom play wtw and that's it All right. that's it okay well those are the picks for uh as but i just want to recap that if you're using thinkorswim and you want to get Jim's um, link to use for your toss setups to get his chart here that he, you know, his 20 day runners, uh, come by the Discord, send him a message in the Discord at Washboard Jim, and he'll be happy to send it to you. At the end of the day, just trying to help everybody. And also, I want to help my Canadian traders. Uh, well, simple. I did mention that uh, they are going to be doing a free trading platform. And to please click in the link in the bio, uh, not the bio, but the link in the YouTube video to get yourselves on the waiting list. And the reason I'm just mentioning it again is I just got an email from Wealth Simple uh, just the other day that uh, they are now in beta testing mode and they've invited me to be a beta tester of the trade app. So I'm going to be testing it and giving them feedback. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but that obviously means that they are going to be launching soon. So if you're Canadian and you want a free platform and I'm sick of paying those bank fees, they are a rip off. Um, all they do is steal our money. Um, definitely check, uh, go onto the YouTube channel here in today's video. I will post the wealth simple sign up link and all you do is click it, put your email so that you're on the wait list. And then they send you a link that you can then share with your friends to get them to sign up and get on the wait list. Um, there's no cost to do any of this. And um, I guess if you.
you just move up the list. But I mean, I'm sure they're going to let everybody in. So um, I think they're just using it as a marketing thing to get people on the wait list. But you know what? I love something free. So why not try it out when it's ready to go? So thank you for Canada to get something free. Finally, we've been begging for something. So I want to see what this is going to be doing for the market. I'm and that's it for now. I'm just loving this scan. I'm going, as you were talking, I was going through and flipping through it. <laughs> every I know, one I of wanted them, to talk about every single one. Every one of them's so a year low. Every one of them, everyone's showing a year low and then a bounce in 20 days. And it's just, just beautiful. Um, and I, mean, I do want to mention, I forgot, Jim, um, but, you know, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Day. And, uh, you know, Jim and I were thinking like, you know, no one's real, the markets are closed, but wouldn't it be great to maybe get together with our YouTubers um, that want to come and uh, maybe learn something tomorrow. And uh, so Jim and I are going to be on here live on YouTube tomorrow. And uh, we're happy to uh, have you guys interact with us and uh, maybe tell us a, a stock that you want us to look at or a chart. And we'll be happy to uh, look it up and give you our opinions and uh, just openly sharing ideas to help everybody. So we will be doing that tomorrow at 11 o'clock um eastern standard time until 1 p.m eastern standard time so two hours live with vegas and gem and uh if you subscribe and follow you'll get the notification when we get on the air so please yeah. subscribe and follow and, um especially you know if you're not in our chat group which is okay at least on youtube you'll get the notification that we're on the air and this will probably be live on my personal youtube channel for the first i mean just so uh we'll, we'll probably put a link on this video below that just to show you where this channel is but i want all my subscribers that are on my personal channel to please subscribe to the i love stocks youtube channel which will be also posted below the video so everybody that's subscribed right now to my live to my james howard youtube channel i want them to subscribe and ring that bell to the i love stocks channel and i think that's about it this is live. All right, this is live. <laughs> this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, January the 20th, 2019. And so far, this has been a wonderful year. My crystal ball is on top, and we're going to have, a, like I said, a live two hour show tomorrow. And we're going to post the time and everything that we're going to be doing this. So, everybody have a great day, and we love stocks. What about you, Vegas? I love stocks. I love everybody. And I'm loving, I have to say, I love 2019. I mean, we said green 2019. And so far, it's been green. So let's just keep this going. It's about finding the right setups. Yep. Have a good night, guys. And please join us tomorrow. We'll be live on YouTube. Have a good night.